My name is Betty Kraus. Let me guide you on a journey into the world of abstract art where you have total freedom and where the art you create is only limited to your imagination. On my show, I'll introduce you to techniques, tools, and tips to turn your imagination into art. Together, we'll add a little more color into this world. Abstractly yours, Betty Kraus. Welcome to Abstractly Yours. I'm Betty Krause. On our last episode, I introduced you to Nova Color Paints, and we went over some basic color theory and harmonizing techniques. And then we put that to good use on the canvas. Today, we're gonna to start by discussing different grades of paint. We're gonna be comparing craft, student, and professional levels of acrylic paints. And then we're going to finish up this piece that we started on in the last episode and show you the final reveal. Paints are mainly judged on pigmentation and consistency. So let's take a closer look and compare the three grades on a piece of paper. I have with me three grades of paints. I've got a craft paint, I've got a student grade paint, and then I have a professional Nova Color paint. And I already put those paints out. And for the Nova Color, because it's a little bit of a darker color than these other two blue colors, I added a little bit of white to it so that the color comparison is, is fairly close. It's, it's not exact. So we're going to take, we're going to start with our craft paint. And for a lot of artists who are just getting started, there are a lot of choices on the market. And really when you're looking at paint, and you're, you're wanting to use it in your, in your artwork, look at paints that have more pigmentation. Typically, the value of the paint, the, the dollar value, is going to be uh, lower for the ones with less pigmentation and working your way up. So um, here is our craft paint. I'm just going to put down a swatch of that. And we can see that we can see the paper underneath a little bit. And then we're going to take our student grade paint. We're going to do the same thing here. Just move it back and forth. And again, we can kind of see the paper coming through. So certainly with these two, you're going to need to add more layers so that you can get a deeper, truer color. And then with our Nova Color Professional Paint, this one you can see right away, the coverage is much better. Even where I'm running out of paint, you can still tell that putting it on there, it's got the full coverage compared to the other two. So when you're looking for paints, I know that artists who are just getting started can get frustrated sometimes when they're creating art and they're not getting a true color. And a, true, a truer color you're gonna get with a better pigmentation. So if you invest a little bit more, you can get uh, something like a Nova Color paint where you're gonna have excellent pigmentation. And I completely understand if you're just getting started, you may not be ready to, to make that kind of investment. So working with some of these other paints, just know that you're going to be using more of that paint, which sometimes in the long run you end up spending about the same amount of money because you're going to use several layers to try to get um, a good consistency and good coverage. And then we talked about, uh, so that's more on pigmentation, we talked about consistency. Um, the craft paints tend to be a little bit more on the runny side. Uh, your student grade paint a little bit thicker and then the Nova Color paints um, a bit more thicker. So, and these are all considered fluid paints as opposed to heavy body. Heavy bodies usually come in a tube and they are much thicker. And you can thin those out with water um, or some kind of a glazing medium. So again, if you're looking for uh, pigmentation that is, that's really rich for your painting, then I would really recommend going with something uh, on the higher end so that you're going to create art and you're going to going to feel comfortable and you're going to like the results a lot more than if you go with the low end with the craft or the student grade paints. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we've gone over the different types of paints out there, let's continue adding layers to our canvas from the last episode using our professional grade paint from Nova Color Paints. All right, so in the last episode, when I started this 36 by 36 canvas, we started off with the cool colors and I did some color blending as we went. And you can see some drips that I introduced here. We've got some circles that I was also showing you how to use with a uh, rigger, which is this tool here. Uh, with, that's got the long bristles on it. So we'll probably use this a little bit more today as well. Uh, so we're going to continue now with some warm colors and uh, we'll build up some more layers. I've got a variety of tools I'll be using. I've got some long handle brushes that I'll be using. I've got some chip brushes, um, some pretty well-worn chip brushes. So we're going to use those today. And then a couple of uh, palette knives to take my paint out. I've got a skewer so we can scratch in. We kind of talked about that last time and then the rigor that I just talked about. So let's start by putting out some colors. And like I said, we're going to work on some warm colors today. So I've got my Nova Color paints here and this is uh, cadmium medium yellow. And let's move on to, let me wipe this down. Actually, I'm going to put out a little bit more of that. that and we've got um, organic orange let's put out a little bit of that and one of my favorites is quinacridone magenta it's a beautiful color especially when you add white to it so we'll do some of that color and let's go with parole red wipe down my palette knife a little bit Alright, I think that's, actually I'm going to add one more color and that is um, Indian yellow, which is a nice warm yellow. Let's add some of that. Alright, so that'll get us started today. So in addition to these colors, today we're also using Nova Gesso that I put into a smaller tube because I buy it in a very large container. So this is much easier for me to use. So I'm just going to put some down. And I like to just spread it around because I always like to mix my colors with white. So let's do that. And one more thing before we get started. We've got um, a variety of different, we talked about these last time. Uh, We've got different types of colored pencils. So I like to start after I've got a layer that has dried. I like to come back in and as if I'm starting on a brand new canvas, I like to start with uh, mark making again. So I'm just going to take a white pencil. We're just going to put down some marks. And that was just a regular pencil. Let's see what else I've got in here. We've got let's go with this teal. All right, and let's pick out one more. If I put my glasses on, I can really see the colors. I'm just going to go with the China marker or also called a grease pencil because I want something a little bit brighter here. All right, so that's a good way to get started. Loosen up a bit. Now let's go to our paints and I'm going to dip it in water a little bit. We'll get started with some yellow, the Indian yellow, and some white mixed in with that. So we're working on our warm colors. When we worked on our cool colors, we also introduced um, a little bit of yellow. Uh, and we're going to do that again with our warm colors. And let's get some of this magenta. So I'm picking up the magenta, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of that Indian yellow too. And 
as we had talked about, we're, we're harmonizing as we go. So by harmonizing, I'm kind of touching some of these other pink colors and mixing them in as I continue to add color. So today I'm going to be working on more of a, uh, the influence being fields of flowers. So we're going to start seeing kind of a formation of, of a field of flowers. So as you work with me here, slowly it's going to start coming together. Right now it really doesn't look like a whole lot um, with abstract art. It's kind of um, um, not quite there. In my mind I kind of know where I'm headed. Uh, but it's all intuitive, so it's going to take a, a little bit to build that up. So, so stick with me as we go through this. I'm just picking up some other colors here now and mixing them. I got some of that orange, and I add a little bit of yellow. That makes a really pretty bright orange color. I like to paint the sides of my canvas as I go. Kind of adds a special look on the sides instead of just painting them one solid color. Uh, many people will paint them just black or just white, but I kind of like it when it wraps around. It's kind of a continuation of the painting. I'm going to bring in one more color now, and um, I'm going to open up this carbon black. Hopefully, it isn't too stuck, <laughs> or it is. There we go. All right. And what I'd like to do with um, when I've got all these colors going on. I like to introduce some gray to offset the bright colors. So. So gray being a bit of a neutral color. So let's add that in. And it really doesn't take a whole lot of black to make a gray. So I'm just going to put a little bit out. And let's actually introduce a different brush. Grab this long handled. Get that a little bit wet. And I've got some white here. So that's already making a nice gray for me. Let's add a little more white to it. And now instead of going with just those two colors, I'm going to harmonize a little bit. I'm going to bring in a little bit of this pink color. That may have been too much, so let's add some white to it now.
And that's more of a pinkish color than I wanted. I'm going to start another pile of it here. And I think that's going to work a bit better for me. This is a good color too. We'll, we'll use this one as well, but I was looking for more of a gray. And I might actually lighten this one up a little bit more, but let's put a little bit of it down. And so the gray, and I've got the cool colors in the background. So uh, with the cool colors in the background, I'm gonna still let those kind of show through. So I'm not covering it entirely. You can still see a little bit of it peeking through uh, so that we've got the warm colors on top for this painting and the cooler colors in the background. We'll grab some of that more pinkish gray. See how that works. And I like the black that's coming through here. I think that's adding some good dimension. Now, some of my paint is still wet, and that's okay. I'm picking up some of it, and that's just adding some more uh, color harmony and interest as I move through here. I'm kind of just working my way around some of these paints that paint colors I've already put down. So I'm looking for an area now where I can have a place where my eye is resting. So instead of having a lot of stuff going on all the, uh, across the entire canvas, I want to create some calmer areas and some softer areas. So that's what I'm attempting to do over in this area. So I know some artists like to wait until the very end and work on their sides, but I find that I have a hard time matching up those colors. So I'm going to do that now so I don't have to think about it later. So for this top area, I'm thinking more in terms of, along with my abstract field of flowers, I'm thinking more of an abstracted sky. So I'm going to kind of do some quieter areas up in the, in the upper area here.
I'm going to switch out my brushes and go back to the chip brush here. And I'm going to give some of this pearl red a try mixed in with a little bit of yellow. It's going to be probably a darker orange color. It's pretty bright still. Kind of like that. So I'm just going over some of those areas that I've already got one layer of color. This one's coming in with a slightly lighter color. And that kind of gives it some depth and some, a little bit of, um, I guess mostly depth. I was gonna say contrast, but since it's a similar color, I'm not creating a whole lot of contrast, but more depth. So I'm going to take my skewer now. I'm just going to do a little bit of scratching in. We did some of that in the earlier layers on that first layer where we did our cool colors, but I'm going to do a little bit on this layer as well. And again, the reason we do that, or the reason I like to do that, is it just starts to build up some more texture, which adds a lot of interest in that finished piece. So I want to add a little bit of more of a neutral color in here. So I'm going to bring out a little bit of that black again. And I'm going to add a touch of yellow. Just going to give it, it's going to give it more of a green color with that touch of yellow in it. And adding white. So it's got a little bit of a gray, brownish gray color to it. Here I'm picking up some of the red that's wet so it's already changing kind of went a little bit darker, and that's okay. It adds more interest that way. I'm gonna use some more white.
So down in this corner, I'm again trying to create kind of a quiet area so I don't have as many of my flowers down in this area just so the eye has a place to rest. And same we did over here with the yellow, yellow being a bright color, but still there's not a whole lot happening over here, so that's giving it another place to rest. So my yellow over here ends about here, and what I'm trying to do is not have this end at the, at the same place because then it would be too balanced out. So I want to actually, I'm going to bring this one up a little bit higher. And this way, when you're looking at it, it's got more interest because you've got a little bit of lighter color here going down into a darker, which I may lighten up just a little bit more. And then you've got the yellow, which is more down in this area. So it's not perfectly uh, matching each other and um, it adds more interest that way. And I'm feeling like I need to lighten up this area right through here. Uh, we've got the yellow here. We've got the lighter color here, a little bit of a uh, purpley or, or a mauve color there. So I'm going to come through here with a little bit of a lighter color. We're going to add more white. All right, so I'm liking the way this is lightened up through the middle area, and I, I want to concentrate now up on the um, quarter top part of this. And I might introduce a little bit more of the flowers, just a tiny bit coming up through here so that the eye can continue up uh, towards the top of it. So let me add a little bit more here, and then we're going to work on kind of our, our sky. Alright, so I may decide to cover up some of that. I'm going to let that dry and I'll work on this area over here and then decide how that's going to work in the overall uh, scheme of the entire painting. Now I've got some red on here, so I'm going to just come over and go over some of these areas that I've already done. Again, adding more interest. I don't cover it entirely. I let a little bit of that previous color show through. I'm just using the side of the brush and whatever color's on there to, to add some more marks.
So when you're painting large like this, it's really good to be able to step back as much as you can so that you're not always up close and just looking at one portion at a time. So stepping back, kind of taking the whole thing in and looking at where your colors, uh, looking at a bit of the composition. I've got um, colors coming right through here, which kind of leads the eye down through here. And that's why I want to introduce a little bit of color up in this area so that the eye is also coming up this way. Um, ideally, you want, you want the viewer to be able to have their eye move around the entire canvas and not just kind of be stuck in one place. So it's important to, to uh, create interest in a variety of areas while still creating some calm and quiet areas. So let's work on this upper quadrant here. And I think on this one, I'd like to just bring in something a little bit more calming. I really like these blues that we've got, um, our cool colors that we introduced, the kind of a purpley color um, as well. So I think I'm going to uh, bring in a little bit of that. So I've got um, ultramarine blue, and I'm not gonna need a whole lot of that. And I'm also going to use the phalo turquoise as well and mix those colors together. And I'm going to add white to that as well. And I'd say that's pretty dark right now, so I'm going to add a little bit more white to that. I think that's looking much better. And I took just a little bit of this orangey color to, so that again I can harmonize my colors. So let's grab another brush. And here we go. We'll use this one, which uh, this one had the um, gray on it, so we're good to go with that. I don't need to clean that off. I'm happy to use what's on there because again, it helps me harmonize my colors as I go. So not quite what I was looking for, but I really like it. So I'm good, let's, let's give that a try. I'm just gonna spread that down here as well. And actually I'm gonna have to mix up some more of that. Let's add some more white. We've got a lot to cover in that upper corner. So I'm letting some of the previous colors show through a little bit, and that's just adding some interest to this area up here. All right, let's step back, see how that looks. All right, so we're kind of introducing a, a different color. So I want to pull some of that color down here. Uh, but I'm, I'm liking the way it's looking so far. And so I want to continue that over this way, but I don't want the exact color going that way. So I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to it and, and deepen that color a bit. That's a pretty blue. And now I'm gonna bring that color down here. So we've got a little bit of this from last time. I'm just gonna go over it. And then let's just come down here and add a little bit more. I think that's looking really pretty with these other ones, but I had a wet red right there, which is messing up my color. Let's see if I can get it looking a little bit better than that. There we go. Lighten it up a bit. All 
All right, so that just kind of helps draw the eye down this way. And let's continue. I'm not crazy about this yellow, so I'm gonna continue and I'm just gonna go right over it. So great thing about acrylic paints is if you don't, if you don't like what you put down, let it dry and then just go right over it. So again, I'm not gonna cover the yellow entirely. I'm gonna let a little bit of that peek through and it's just adding a lot more interest that way. So just as I discussed over here, we've got this corner that is yellow, and then this one I wanted to bring it up a bit. Same concept up here where I've got this um, kind of blue-green here, kind of stops here. This blue, darker blue stops a little bit higher, and now this one I'm bringing down a little bit lower, uh, just so that it's not all perfectly even and doesn't create a perfect um, horizontal line or a horizon line. So when I'm working on this, uh, and I know, I'm sure you can hear it, you can hear me uh, working on this canvas, you can hear the, the brushing sound. And the reason, a big reason for that is because I don't put a whole lot of paint on my brush. If I did, then I would be really covering up everything and, it, and I wouldn't be allowing those previous layers to show through. So it may take a little bit longer to do this, but in the long run, you're going to have more interest because you, you can see uh, the previous layers peeking through and, and adding that dimension. All right, so we've got um, a lot of the top layers covered. I really like that you can see the drip marks coming through, which adds a lot of interest up in that corner. And I've got some marks here from a previous layer that are just peeking through a little bit. All right, so uh, let's take a moment here and we're just gonna step back, take a look where else I need to go. I'm kind of not sure about this area right here. Uh, it doesn't seem uh, very cohesive with the rest of it. So let me see what I can do there. Um, maybe introduce a little bit of a, let's see what color shall we put in there. I'm gonna add maybe a little bit of orange through here. It's just this peak here that doesn't quite seem to make sense to, to my eye. And so instead of just covering this spot, I'm gonna just continue this color down a little bit. Otherwise, it'll seem obvious that I'm trying to fix one spot. All right, so let's take a look at that. I like where it's going. I'm gonna come down here. My eye is drawn down here, and I can see these previous layers here under this orange but I don't really, it feels a little muddied up. So I'm gonna come over it with another uh, layer of orange and brighten that up a bit. And I'm gonna switch brushes to do that. Go to my other brush. I've got orange here. Let's add that in here. Maybe a little here too.
All right, so taking a look at it from a distance and taking it all in, uh, I want to work on maybe just introducing a little bit of blue right in this area. And these yellow ones, I want to put one more color um, right over it, probably very similar to a yellow or, or some variety, um, a, a tone or a shade of yellow there. Um, but I'm really pleased with, with where it's at right now. I think it's got a, a lot of interest. I don't want to overwork the canvas um, because once I start overworking it, I get a little bit too tight in all of my brush marks and I don't want to, I still want to keep this really loose and free and very abstract. So let's um, add a little bit more blue over there. I'm going to grab another chip brush here and I've got blue still on my palette that hasn't completely dried out yet. With acrylic paints, uh, you have less time to work with them when you put them out on the palette, especially during the summer months. So uh, this blue is still good. So let's come in here and I'm going to add a little bit of blue right through here. And get the side of my canvas as well. And where's my blues? I'm going to come down in here too. This is, hasn't even dried yet, so let's just touch that up a little bit. Okay, so looking at that, not 100% happy with that. So let's do this real quick. We're going to take my squirt gun, my spray bottle with water in it. I'm going to spray it down. So when you do something that you're not pleased with, just go ahead and spray it down. And now I've just lightened it up a little bit and I think I like that much better. I think that blue was a little bit too dark in there because I wanted the eye to still come down into this blue area here. I'm gonna bring this one back because that was still wet underneath. There we go. All right, so I'm good with that. And then I said I wanted to address the yellow area, so let's do that. I'm gonna take this brush here. And I have Indian yellow and medium candium yellow. I'm just mixing those two together. It's not gonna be quite as bright, so I'm gonna allow some of that previous yellow to show. And let me lighten this up with some white here. Go a little bit lighter. I think that's better. So we're still letting that other yellow show through, but this one's a little bit uh, more blended. I think it's it's better harmonized with the other colors. This yellow looks too much like it's directly out of the jar. I've got some through here, and and I'm okay with that. I think that that's going to work. But I'm going to introduce a little bit over here. Okay, so as you can tell, you can continue working on this. You can keep building it up more and more. Um, there's really no great stopping point. And a lot of people ask, how do you know uh, you're done? How do you know you've come to the end? And for me, I mentioned that I wanted to stay loose. I wanted to keep this very abstract. So I know that I'm at a point now where I can stop. And I want to do a little bit more here, but not with paint. We're going to do that with um, colored pencils. So I like to leave some marks, do the mark making at the very end. And so um, I think it's dry enough for us to do that. There's a few areas that are wet, and we're going to avoid those areas for now. And I'll show you how I like to finish up my canvases. So let's grab a few. I've got my tray here with all kinds of colors. I've got an eraser here. Um, eraser comes in handy. We talked about this before. If there's a mark I put down and I don't like it, I'm just going to go through and, and um, go back and erase it. So let's start with um, a pencil. And this is very similar to when we started. It's kind of very loose and free. So I'm just going to come in and make some marks. And, and these, this mark making here is just going to add interest. From a distance, you're not really going to see it. We're going to do some close-up shots for you. But when you come up close, uh, you're going to see some of these marks, which, 
which adds a lot of interest. So when I view a painting, I like to view it from a distance because it's got a different look and feel to it, but I also like to look at it close up and then find a lot of that detail in there. So that's what we're doing now is we're adding some of that detail. So then when I put down those marks, I don't like them all to show as a continuous mark, so I'm gonna come in and erase them a little bit. All right, I'm gonna switch out, um, how about a lighter green color? Uh, we don't really have that on here so much. I mean, this is kind of a light green, but that's okay. It's gonna add some interest that way. And so when I hold my pencil, I keep it really loose because I'm not writing on my canvas. I'm making marks. So clearly if I put marks up here, those aren't gonna show so much, but here um, over, I, I put them over the uh, orange areas and that's gonna show a little bit more when you're up close. All right, let's switch out colors. Um, how about a lighter pink color? So not really showing up too much, uh, but still I'd like to put those down because I really think it just adds more interest. And how about teal? My favorite color, and we don't really have much of it here uh, other than a, a lighter version of it, so I'm going to add some in. That'll work. And last but not least, I want to add some white. So I'm going to actually use my china marker for that. And let's move, there's a string on it to peel the paper down. So I'm going to move that out of the way. So white can be pretty bold when you're, when you're working on a lot of um, colors that are kind of working together and complementing each other. So I'm going to be a bit sparse with it. And with this one, you can actually rub it out a little bit. And again, if you don't like it, um, even with the China marker, which is also a grease pencil, you can come in with your eraser and push that back a bit so it's not quite as dark in some areas. So don't be afraid to put down any kind of pencil marks because you've got an eraser and you can just push that back or erase it entirely. So I am good with that. I'm really pleased with the way it looks. I'm loving these colors. I'm loving my bright colors. So we've got the oranges and the yellows and the pops of blue. We've got the lighter blue with a little bit of a darker blue over it, which is really kind of giving that um, some depth in there. And then above, we've got some nice quiet areas and we've got the eye kind of pulling up this way with some other quieter areas down in these corners. So really pleased with it and um, really happy that you joined me today. That's all for this episode of Abstractly Yours. Before we go, I want to leave you with this. Arshiel Gorky once said, abstraction allows a man to see with his mind what he cannot physically see with his eyes. Think beyond reality and open yourself to creativity. 
I'll see you next time on Abstractly Yours.